house. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you for being here. We're so excited. Sit down, wolves. Sit down. Excellent. All right. We're so thrilled. They're so excited. They gave a terrific performance this afternoon. And we're going to give you another one this evening. So thank you for being here and enjoy this remarkable journey to magical Narnia. mistake. This is going to be great. The professor will let us do what we like. I think he's an old dear. Yes, but I'm not sure I like the housekeeper. There will be no disturbing the professor. I think this house is boring and stupid. Oh, Edmund, don't be such a baby. And anyway, it's time you were in bed. Stop trying to talk like mother. Who are you to say when I go to bed or not? Go to bed yourself. How don't we all go to bed? There's sure to be a row up here for her talking. No, there won't. This is the sort of house where no one will mind what we do. Anyway, they won't hear us. It's about a 10-minute minute walk from here down to the dining hall, with any amount of stairs and passages in between. What's that noise? <laughs> it's only an owl, silly. Hey, guys, you want to go look at that room with the swords and suits of armor? What do you say, Edmund? I challenge you. All right, but it's going to be boring. Susan? You go ahead, Peter. I think I'll go back down to the library and look through some books. How about you, Lucy? No, thank you. I'm going to stay here and unpack. All right, but don't wander about and get lost. I won't be long. Susan? Susan? Hey, Unicorn, guess what? I just saw the white sack. I'm going to track him. He went that way. I know. I've been on this trail all night. So close. He was huge and so beautiful. My grandfather told us whoever catches the white stag will be granted their fondest wish. But we don't know if it's true because it's basically impossible to catch him. Thanks, Fox. That's really encouraging. But you know the keeping the faith is our only chance. Beavers. Central, you would never guess. Last night as I was falling asleep, I saw the white stag. Ugh, not again. No, Mr. Beaver, I assure you, it's true. Now, Beaver, let the child speak. And I saw him just now. He went right by me. I could almost touch him. When I saw him, he was not 50 paces away staring. Just staring. He did not speak? No, sir, but there's something about the way he looked at me. I was sure he was trying to tell me something. Then he turned and disappeared. So I fall, and I've been falling all night. I couldn't help myself. I saw him twice more, once at the river and again near the stone table. Well, I'm sure he's just leaning on a wild goose chase, making you think something good will happen when it never will. Mythical creatures do that. Oh, uh, not always. What Mr. Beaver means is that in the legend, the white stag draws the hunter on while remaining just out of reach, the joy of the pursuit and all. Ah, oh, yes. In the legends of Huna and Magar, sons of Nimrod, the great hunter king, the stag leads him on a long and dangerous journey. They never catch him, but the journey leads him to a new land where they establish a new kingdom. I remember that story, seeing the white stag led to a time of peace and prosperity for their people. My grandfather told us whenever the white stag appears, there's a change on the horizon. 
Something big will happen, something good and important. Well, I'm sure it means nothing for us. There are no good times for us, only jadis in our endless winter. I am so sick of this winter. Quiet, Mr. Beaver, you know the trees are listening. I think you are wrong, Beaver. I think the appearance of the white stag in our land can only mean one thing. What, Centaur? What do you think it means? Something good and important? Aslan is on the move. I knew seeing the white stag meant something. But Aslan not, has not been seen for years. Not in my time or my father's time. Why now? I don't know, Beaver, but I do know it's dangerous and foolhardy to ignore the sign. Keep walking. Shh, listen. It's Malgrim. I'm terribly sorry, sir. And Temnus the Font, how do you ever get mixed up in that bad business? Whatever the reason, he's in a mess. And we will be too if Malgrim finds us here. You're right, Beaver. I'm gonna go spread the word. You keep searching for the stag. Track him carefully. I'll meet you at the stone table. You could count on me. And me too. Tracking is my specialty. Clumsy fool! I hate fawns. If it were up to me, this would end quickly. <laughs> All right, you. You're lucky that I am in the Queen's service, and in her name must I ask what you have to report. To report, sir? See, I told you they were stupid. Have you seen a child of Adam this past fortnight? My report is always the same, sir. I watch and I walk as I have for years, but no child of Adam ever deigns to grace me with their presence. It's just me. Walking in the endless winter. I don't need your poetry, fool. Just your unwavering obedience to the queen. Every day, without fail. Y yes, sir. Excuse me, sir, but what does the queen want with the sons of Adam and daughters of Eve? That's not for the likes of you to wonder, but you do need to be very sure of what would happen to you if you let a child of Adam escape. She will saw off my horns and turn me into a stone statue? Ah, there is a brain, that tiny little head of yours. I suggest you keep the thought of what could happen to you uppermost in your mind at all times. Make an immediate report if you see any strange activity. If you can remember long enough, that is? Y yes, sir. I will report. Be vigilant. You were watched. Goodness gracious me. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Excuse me, I don't want to be inquisitive, but should I be right in thinking that you are a daughter of Eve? My name is Lucy. But you are. You are what they call a girl? Of course I'm a girl. You are in fact human? Of course. To be sure, to be sure. But I've never seen a son of Adam or a daughter of Eve before. I'm delighted. That's to say, delighted, delighted. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tumnus. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Tumnus. And how have you, O oh Lucy, daughter of Eve, come to Narnia? Narnia? What's that? All that lies between the lamppost and the great castle of Care Paravel on the Eastern Sea is the land of Narnia. Narnia. And you, you have come from the wild woods of the west? I came here through the wardrobe in the spare room. Ah, uh, if only I had worked harder at geography when I was a little fawn, I should know all about these strange countries. Too late now. But they aren't countries at all. It's quite different. Back there, it's summertime. It's midwinter here in Narnia. It's been winter for ever so long. But we'll both catch cold if we stand here talking in the snow. Daughter of Eve, from the far land of Spare Oom, where eternal summer reigns around the bright city of Wardrobe, will you come and take tea with me? I ought to be getting back. It's only just around the corner. There'll be a roaring fire, and toast and sardines, and cake. Well, I can't stay long. Come, daughter of Eve. I'll hold my umbrella over both of us. That's the way. Now, let's go.
while I prepare the tea things. I'd rather explore if you don't mind. Explore, explode, or stand on your head. It's all the same to me. Let's see. The first thing I like to do in a new room is to inspect the books. Let's see. Elves on their ways, the care and breeding of unicorns. It's man and myth. We haven't got any of these at home. Now, daughter of Eve, I wasn't sure what you would like, so I've done everything. It looks lovely. Thank you. Mr. Tumnus, the music in here lovely. But I was only meant to stay for a few minutes. It's no good now, you know. No good? What do you mean? I have to go home at once. The others will wonder what has happened to me. <coughs> Mr. Tumnus, whatever is the matter, aren't you well? <coughs> Mr. Tumnus, stop it at once. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, a great big fawn like you. Oh, I don't suppose there's ever been a worse fawn since the beginning of the world. What have you done? I'm in the pay of the White Witch. The White Witch? Who is she? She's the one who keeps all Narnia under her crooked thumb. She's the one who makes it always winter. Always winter and never Christmas. Think of that. How awful. And what does she pay you for? I'm paid to be a kidnapper. Look at me, daughter of Eve. Would you think that I'm the sort of fawn to meet a poor innocent child in the wood and invite it home to tea so that I could hand it over to the white witch? You wouldn't do anything of the sort. But I have. Well, that was pretty bad, but I'm sure you'll never do it again. Don't you understand? It's not something I have done. I'm doing it now. What do you mean? You are the child. The witch told me if I ever met a child of Adam or Eve, I was to catch them for her. And you're the first one I ever met. So I pretended to be your friend. And all the while, I've been waiting for you to fall asleep so I can go and tell the witch. Oh, you won't, Mr. Tumnus, will you? If I don't, she's sure to find out. She'll saw off my horns and cut off my tail and I'll be a stone statue of a fawn until the four thrones at Care Paravel are filled, if that time ever comes. I'm very sorry, Mr. Tumnus, but please let me go home. I didn't realize what humans were like, but now I know you. I can't hand you over to the witch. If I see you to the lamppost, can you find your way back to spare room and wardrobe? I think so. Come, let's go. Quietly does it. The wood is full of her spies. Even some of the trees are on her side. All right, hurry home as quick as you can. And can you ever forgive me? Yes, I hope you won't get into much trouble because of me. Here, take this handkerchief to remember me by. Thank you. Farewell, daughter of Eve. Now go. talking about, Lucy. Get your boots on. We've decided to dig an air raid shelter. Weren't you all wondering where I was? Have you been hiding and no one noticed you were gone? You'll have to hide longer if you want people to start looking for you. But I've been away for hours and hours. She's losing her mind. What do you mean, Lou? What I said. See, after you all went looking around, I tried to find you, but I couldn't. So I went into a wardrobe and had tea and all sorts of things happened. Don't be silly, Lucy. You've only been gone for a few minutes. 
You're just making up a story for fun, aren't you, Luke? I'm not. It's, it's a magic wardrobe. There's a wood inside, and there's a witch and a fawn, and it's snowing, and it's called Narnia. She's gone completely bonkers. That's enough, Ed. All right, good joke, Lou, but it's time to stop. But it's not a joke. You have to believe me. That's enough now. Drop it. Come with us and help dig the air raid shelter. Why, sir, I'm surprised to see you back so soon. Some tea? Shut up, Fawn! No use pretending. I said you were being watched. Did you think I would not know? Um, no. What, sir? That you had a daughter of Eve in your grasp and you let her go. But she was only one, and the queen wanted four, so I did not think... That's exactly right. You did not think. You did not stop to adequately consider the consequences of your actions. You are more of a fool than I thought. But it doesn't matter anymore. Take a last look around, Fawn. You won't be back. Soon, your name will be written in stone. Your own! Listen, Lou, sorry I didn't believe you. You were right all along. Just like a girl, sulking somewhere, won't even accept an apology. Hold there, tie the reindeer to that tree, Grimlick. Consider it done, your majesty. You there. Who, me? Of course you. Kneel in the presence of the mighty ruler of Narnia. But I, I am kneeling. How dare you challenge the first seat servant of Queen Jadis? Lower, fool. Now that's more like it. And what, pray, are you? My, my, my name is Edmund. Is that how you address the queen? I beg your pardon, your majesty. I, I did not know. He did not know. Not know the queen of Narnia? You shall know us better hereafter. Now I repeat, what? are you? Speak, fool, or you will regret it. I'm, I'm, I'm a boy, your majesty. A boy? A boy? Did you hear that, Grimlick? A boy. He must be a son of Adam. He looks more like an idiot. Tell me, boy, how did you come to enter my domain? P please, your majesty, I came in through a wardrobe. A wardrobe? A wardrobe? What do you mean? I opened a door and just found myself here. What kind of door, boy? It must be a door from the world of men. I have heard of such things. This may wreck all, 
But he is only one and easily dealt with. I will happily deal with him, Your Majesty. My poor child, how cold you look. Grimlick, bring him something warm to drink. Right away, Your Majesty. Tell me, Edmund, my dear son of Adam, are there any more of you humans in these parts? I have a sister, Lucy. She said she met a fawn. I think she might be looking for him. Ah, uh, here is your drink, sweet and delicious. <laughs> it's wonderful. I'm so glad. Now let's see, you and Lucy, you say? That's only two humans. But didn't the prophecy say there would be four? Yes, so we have nothing to worry about. Nonetheless, you don't have any brothers and sisters, do you? Yes, Peter and Susan. Where, pray tell, are they? Still in the house, where we are visiting, on the other side of the wardrobe. But Majesty, that makes four humans and fulfills the prophecy. Yes, we have caught one and he will soon fall deeper under our spell and help us catch the other three. Now, my dear, you must be hungry. You like candy, yes? What is your favorite? <laughs> That's easy. Turkish delight, your majesty. How fortunate. I just happened to have some right here. Enjoy, my little prince. <laughs> it's the best Turkish delight I've ever tasted. Son of Adam, I would so much like to meet your brother and sisters. Will you bring them to me? I, I will try. Because if you did come back, and bring them to my house. I could give you lots more Turkish delight. It's a lovely place, my house. There are whole rooms filled with Turkish delight. Whole rooms. I don't have any children of my own. I want a nice boy who I can bring up to be the king of Narnia when I'm gone. The king could wear a golden crown and send them a throne in my castle and eat Turkish delight all day long. Can we go there now? First, I must meet your brother and sisters to make sure they'd be suitable courtiers for my little king. There's nothing special about them. Go back to your country now and come to me another day with them. Do you understand? It's no good coming without them. No good. Do you see those two hills rising above the trees? I think so. My house lies right between them. Just walk to the woods towards the hills and you will find it. But remember, bring the others with you. I'd be very angry if you came alone. Very angry. And by the way, you needn't mention me to them. That fawn may have told your sister nasty stories about me. Nasty stories. Fawns will say anything, you know. Please, couldn't I just have one more piece of Turkish delight to eat as I walk? No. You must wait till next time. Next time. Next time. Don't forget. Come soon. Come soon. Edmund, you came. See, I told you Nar Narnia was real. But there's something terrible. I can't find Mr. Tumnus anywhere. I'm so afraid that the White Witch has punished him for letting me go. The White Witch? Who is she? She calls herself the Queen of Narnia, but she has no right to be the Queen of anything. She turns people into stone, and she's made a magic that is always winter in Narnia, but never Christmas. Who told you all that stuff? Mr. Tumnus, the fawn. Fawns will say anything, you know. You just can't believe them. Who said so? Everyone knows it. Ask anyone. Come on, my feet are freezing. Let's go home. Yes, we must tell Peter and Susan. They'll believe me now, since you've been here. Edmund, you look awful. Are you okay? I'm all right. Just a little queasy. Must have been something late. Come on, let's go.
The Broken Dam will just have to wait. I said we would meet them here. Yes, this other business is more important. It could be the beginning of something. Do you think Centaur can do anything? This is so exciting. Centaur, we're so grateful you have come. There isn't much time. We have some important news for you too. What has happened? We were out inspecting what appeared to be a severe break in our dam when we saw Malgrim. And his nasty Lieutenant Bartolf. That's not unusual. They patrol the woods regularly. Yes, but this time he was dragging Mr. Tumnus behind. Poor creature. They seemed to rough him up pretty badly. We went back to his house and it was destroyed. I tracked them for an hour. They were definitely heading to the Queen's castle. Bardov kept smacking him. It made me so mad. Tumnus, then Tumnus, I wanted to challenge him, but then Tumnus waved me off and dropped this. What is that? We don't know, but we think it belongs to a human. A female from the look of it. You think a daughter of Eve has been to Narnia? Yes, and that Tumnus let her go. Which will explain why he would have come within Malgrim's sights. Poor creature, he'll be stoned by now, for sure. I think we should go and rescue him. Fox, no one is rescued from the witch's castle. Do you have any idea where this human has gone? No, Tumnus could tell us nothing. It was all he could do to drop the anchor, Chief. If the daughter of Eve has any brain, she left Narnia the minute she had the chance, never to return. Or to return with others. Others? You mean more humans? Perhaps. Remember the prophecy? Two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve. As we suspected, Aslan's indeed on the move. They say he'll be in Narnia any day now. Aslan, at last! If the children of Adam do return, and we can get them to the stone table to meet Aslan, the prophecy could be fulfilled. And the winter will end. Centaur, what can we do to help? We must be vigilant and await their return. Then I must intercept them and safely guide them to the stone table without the witch becoming aware. Uh, Centaur, I don't think you should be the first thing they see. Ah, yes. They will likely be afraid and run back to where they came from. Good thinking, Unicorn. I could go. Humans are used to being, seeing foxes, and I can be very friendly. Hmm. <clears throat> Fox, I think you are right. You should find a way to meet them, as you are less likely to cause panic. Then you should bring them to Mr. Ernest's beaver, who will help guide them to the stone table. We will not be far away, and we'll intercede if you're stopped by Malcolm and his crew. Yes, sir, I can do it. You should wait near Tumnus's cave, as that is familiar territory, at least for the one who is here. But what if they are afraid of me, or don't trust us? When Fox brings them to you, you must find a way to get in their good graces. We're all counting on you. We will do it, Centaur. Fox, come with us, come, come with us so we can plan. We will talk on the way. Don't worry, worry, don't you worry, dear. It'll be all right. Now are you convinced, Peter? Yes, I apologize, Lou, for not believing you. It's so cold here, even with these coats. I'm not sure about us taking them. I'm sure nobody would mind. It's not as if we want to take them out of the house. We wouldn't even want to take them out of the wardrobe. That's a good thought, Susan. Now you put it that way. I see. Where should we go first? <laughs> explore, of course. Let's go in that direction. No, we don't have time to explore. We have to find Mr. Tumnus. We need to head for his cave. I'm not sure, Lucy. I don't like it here. I think we should go back. This doesn't feel right. We can't go back without finding Mr. Tumnus. But you tried already. You couldn't even find his house. Well, we should try one more time. Lucy, you lead the way. I know we went in this direction. He had the funniest umbrella to keep the snow off as we walked. Why would anyone use an umbrella in the snow? Be quiet, Ed. I knew his house was right here. What's that? The former occupant of these premises, the Fawn Tumnus, is under arrest on a charge of high treason against Her Imperial Majesty Jadis, Queen of Narnia. Also for comforting Her Majesty's enemies and fraternizing with humans. Signed, Maugrim, Captain of the Secret Police. Long live the Queen. 
I don't much like this, Narnia. I was afraid this would happen. Who is this queen, Lou? She's not a real queen. All the wood people hate her. She casts a spell over the whole country, so it's always winter, but never Christmas. Narnia doesn't seem like a very friendly place. It's getting colder every minute, and we brought nothing to, to eat. Let's go home. No, we can't go home without finding Mr. Tumnus. He hid me from the witch. That's what it means by fraternizing with humans. We've got to rescue him. I suppose Lou's right. What do you think, Susan? I wish we'd never come here, but Lucy's right. We must try to help this fawn. Where should we look first? I think we should look for food. You're always thinking about your stomach. <laughs> and you're always thinking about your stupid books. At least I can read. Stop it, you two. We don't have time for this. No, we don't. We have to find Mr. Tumnus. Shh. Look over there. Where? By that small hill. It looks like a fox. Yes, you can tell by its red fur and pointy ears. It's sort of beckoning to us. Shall we go to it, Lucy? I think it's a good fox. Yes, but how do we know? We don't, but we have to risk it. We can't just stand here until we starve. All right, stick together. The four of us should be a match for one fox. Crouch down. Make yourself as small as you can. Are you the sons of Adam and daughters of Eve? For some of them. Shh, not so loud, please. We're not safe, even here. Who are you afraid of? There's no one here but us. The trees have ears. They're always listening. Most are on our side, but some would betray us for her, if you know what I mean. Now, come, quickly. I've been sent to bring you to the beaver's house. Wait a minute. I say we go to the castle. Who wants to listen to a silly fox? Stop being so smug, Ed. But how do we know she's a friend? Quite right. Here's my token. That's my handkerchief I gave to poor Mr. Tumnus. Right, he dropped it as he was being taken away. Now, come quickly. I say we go to the castle. I say we go with Miss Fox. I agree with Peter. Me too. That's three against one, Ed. Come on, there's food. Daughters of Eve. Well done, Miss Fox. Welcome. You must be freezing. Come, have a seat. I prepared some dinner for you. It looks delicious. Thank you. Yes, indeed. I am famished. We're very grateful for your hospitality, aren't we, Ed? I prefer Turkish delight. What, dear? He said it looks perfect. He's delighted. Well, go ahead, children. You all taught. Miss Fox, you stand guard. Oh, it's snowing again. That's good. Anybody following us won't find our footprints. Do you know what happened to Mr. Tumnus? Very bad business. He was taken off by the secret police. But where have they taken him? They were last seen heading northwards, and we all know what that means. We don't actually. It means he was taken off to the White Witch, who will likely use her magic powers to turn him to stone. Her castle is full of stone statues. Narnia and she use magic with her wand, victims of her evil temper. Poor Tumnus. It's cold and dark. No one ever escapes from the White Witch. But we have to do something to rescue him. It's all because of me. Don't you all worry. I don't put all to rights. At, what is Aslan? Is he a man? A man? Certainly not. The ideas these children come with. He's the king of the whole wood, son of the great emperor beyond the sea. Aslan is a lion, a great lion. 
I thought Aslan was a man. I feel nervous about being a lion. That you will, dearie, and make no mistake. If there's anyone who can peer before Aslan without their knees knocking, is braver than most, or else just silly. I want to meet him, even if I do feel frightened. And so you shall. Word has been sent. You're to meet him at the stone table. Where's that? Down the river, a good way from here. I could take you. And once you meet Aslan, you can help fulfill the prophecy. But I don't understand. How do we fit into this prophecy? But you will. Listen to the rhyme. When Adam's flesh and Adam's bone sits at Caraparavel and throne, the evil times will be over and done. But what does it mean by Adam's flesh and Adam's bone? It means humans. Aslan wants to meet you because you're the first humans to ever come to Narnia. But what about the queen and the dwarf? Aren't they humans? You mean the witch and the dwarf. She'd like you to believe they're human, but they're not. They're evil through and through, not a drop of human blood in them. This Caraparavel that you mentioned, how many thrones are there? Two for sons of Adam. And two for daughters of Eve. And once they are filled, it will mean the end of the witch's reign and her life. That's quite a responsibility, a bit more than we bargained for. But it's quite a necessity. We have to do our part to save Mr. Thomas. Lucy's right. I say we go. Let's go. All right, I'm with you. Ed, what about you? Ed? Edmund, where could he have gone? Perhaps to get some air. I'll check outside. Do you think he could be ill? He hasn't looked well ever since we got here. Wait a minute. The last thing he said was about a witch and a dwarf. How do you know about a dwarf? Is there such a person? Yes, he drives the witch's sleigh. That means Ed has met them. And eaten her food, no doubt. He had that look about him. He's surely under her spell. This is terrible. I wish we had never come. This is the place, right? Yes, go greet them. Oh no, is that? I'm afraid so. It seems the witch has arrived already. Brace yourselves. All who dwell within, make yourselves presentable for an esteemed visitor. It's the dwarf! I resent that insinuation. I'm no dwarf, I'm an elf. What's the difference? Either way, we're in the hands of the witch. Wait, Peter, I think there might be a difference. An elf, you say? An elf, I said. Elves aren't bad if I'm not mistaken. You're not mistaken. He's mistaken. You're Lucy. And you're clever. Very clever because you know my name. And she knows your name because I told her. Father Christmas! At your service, I've come at last. She has kept me out for a long time, but I have got in at last. Aslan is on the move. The witch's magic is weakening. Change is on the horizon. And now it is time for your presence. There's a new sewing machine for you, Ms. Beaver. I've left it out in the shed. Thank you, sir, but I believe it's all locked up. Locks and bolts make no difference to me. And as for you, Mr. Beaver, next you look, you'll find your dam mended and finished, and all the leaks stopped, and a new sluice gate fitted. I don't know what to say. I think you will do. Th thank you, sir. And as for you, Miss Fox, you'll find that new set of fireplace tools you've been wanting just inside your door. Thank you, sir. I'm sure they'll be perfect. Peter, Adam's son. Here, sir. These are your presents. They are tools, not toys. The time to use them is perhaps at hand. Bear them well. Susan, youth's daughter. These are for you. The bow does not easily miss. Use it to defend yourself. And if you put your lips to this horn and blow it, help will come to you, no matter where you are. Lucy, younger daughter of Eve. In this bottle is a cordial made from the juice of fire flowers. If you or any of your friends are hurt, a few drops of this will restore them. And the dagger is to defend yourself. Use it only when given no other choice. Thank you, Father Christmas. Well, that does it. We have many more presents to deliver. We must be on our way. Onward, Lafarlin, to the sleigh. It is ready. A Merry Christmas to you all, and long live the King. Now, now we must be on our way at once. We must travel quietly and quickly. You may well need the gifts of Father Christmas before this journey is over.
are you, stranger? He's that human weakling I was telling you about. Where are the others, boy? If you please, sir, my name is Edmund. I am a son of Adam. I bring news of my brothers and sisters. The queen wanted to see them. Very well. Wait here, stay still, and don't leave this room, or you'll be turned to stone like those you passed as you entered. You mean all those statues out there? They used to be alive? Yes, until they crossed her majesty and paid the price. An enemy of the queen ultimately meets a stony end. Watch him. <laughs> I thought he told you to stay still, didn't he? I would hate to tell the queen that you disobeyed an order. I don't know, Grimlick. I'd like to see what happened. It can be entertaining. How dare you come alone? Did I not tell you to bring the others? I, I, I did the best I could, Your Majesty. They are at Mr. and Mrs. Beaver's house. Is this all your news, son of Adam? No. The beavers say Aslan is on the move. Aslan? They are going to meet Aslan at the stone table. Never speak that name in my presence again. Yes, Your Majesty. So he has arrived and has begun. Perhaps it's only a rumor, Majesty. All the forest creatures are liars and thieves. But it has been getting warmer. Even the snow in the fields are melting. If you have lied to me... I, I swear, Your Majesty, I came to tell you exactly what they said. Now, if you please, Your Majesty, could I have some Turkish delight, as you promised? Bring the human creatures some food and drink. It won't do good to have the brat fainting for lack of food. Your Majesty's wisdom is exceeded only by her beauty. Make the army ready for the journey. All is prepared, Majesty. We must capture the children of Adam before they reach the stone table. Capture? But why? Silence, fool. I shall never allow that prophecy to come true. Never. That's stale bread and mucky water. Eat and drink. Yes, Your Majesty. Grimlick, make ready the sleigh. We must leave immediately. But, Majesty, the, the reindeer can't pull the sleigh in the melting snow. It'll sink in the mud. Then we shall go on foot. Malgrim and Bardolph, this is the plan. Take the swiftest of your wolves to the house of the beavers. Kill whatever you find there. Then make all speed to the stone table and wait for me. I hear and obey, my queen. Your wish is our command. Grimlick, bring the human and drive him ahead of us with your whip. With pleasure, Majesty. There's a kingfisher. And flowers blooming. Is winter really over? The snow is definitely melting. This is spring, all right? Ah, oh, it's been so long. I can smell the flowers already. Huh, the witch can't use her old sleigh now. Children, we've arrived. Stone table. There's Aslan. Go and greet him. No, you first. Sons of Adam before animals. Very well. <laughs> Aslan, we have come. Welcome, Peter, son of Adam. Welcome, Susan and Lucy, daughters of Eve. But where is the fourth? He's betrayed them and joined the White Witch. That was partly my fault, Aslan. I was angry with him. I think that helped him go wrong. Please, Aslan, can anything be done to save Edmund? He didn't mean to start any trouble. He didn't start this. All shall be done, but it may be harder than you think. In the meantime, Centaur, take the company and let the feast be prepared. They are tired and need rest. Peter will remain with me. Yes, King, at once. Peter, look into the distance where Narnia meets the sea. There is a castle. I can see it. It is Care Paravel of the Four Thrones. Once the prophecy is fulfilled, you and your siblings will sit on these thrones. I tell you because you were the firstborn and will be high king above the rest. 
That's Susan blowing the hunting horn. There must be danger. Aslan, protect us. Let's attack. Stand back. Let the prince win his spurs. So the great Aslan has returned. My queen would be interested in this news. But before I go, would the mighty one like to test my strength? Do you see that, Bartolf? They're so afraid of Malgrim, they send him all over the fight. Get a boy at that. This will be an easy kill. So be it, Aslan. I will make short work of him, just as my queen's army will do. This patch of you and your cowardly crew in the wink of an eye. likely a mortal wound. They will return to the witch. Follow them and rescue the fourth son of Adam. Consider it done. Now kneel, son of Adam. Rise, Sir Peter Wolfbane. Keep your courage. Let us go and await their return. Your Majesty. They must have reached the stone table by now. Let's keep this one prisoner. Let them bargain for him. Yes, and let them rescue him? Then we must get rid of him at once. I'd like to have done it at the stone table itself. That is the proper place. Spare me, Your Majesty. Let me go home. You have no home. I've seen them, Your Majesty. That stone table's at him. They've killed Malgrim. We must escape. I will not run. Go, summon all your soldiers to meet me here. If they want a battle, we will give them one. Yes, Your Majesty. All right, untie him. We have to do it here and now. Spare me, Your Majesty. I, I won't ever come back to the world of men. I'll go back to the world of men, I promise. Shut up, human. This way. Stay behind me. Majesty, we are found. And outnumbered. Leave him. Is this the fourth son of Adam? Yes. Edmund, can you walk? I think so. Here, let me help you. Now let's be at back at the stone table at once before the witch can make her next move. And turns us all into stone. Let's go quickly. Aslan, we should have gone with the others to help rescue Edmund. We can't risk losing any more children of Adam. I have every confidence in Centaur and the others. Be patient. I see them! Ed, are you all right? Did she hurt you? What happened, Ed? The, the queen. I, I mean the witch. She lied. I didn't understand. It was awful. It's all right, my son. You are among friends now. A Aslan? Come with me. I wish I could hear. Stay here, Lucy. Come here, Lou. Sit by me. Here is your brother. There is no need to talk to him about what has passed. I'm sorry, Lou. It's all right, Edmund. Susan? We're glad you're safe. Peter, welcome back, brother. Sire, someone approaches. Go and see what they want. Yes, sire. Shall we prepare for battle? Hold, my son. Let us see what comes to pass. Sire, this dwarf has a message from the enemy. Let him approach. What is your message, son of Earth? The Queen of Narnia and Empress of the Lone Islands de demands a safe conduct to speak with you on a matter which is much to your advantage as to hers. Tell your mistress, son of Earth, that I will grant her safe conduct if she leaves her wand behind at the Great Oak. The Great Oak. It is agreed. There she is. Large as life and twice as ugly. You have a traitor here, Aslan. Well, his offense is not to you. Have you forgotten the deep magic? Let us say I have forgotten it. Tell us of this deep magic. Tell you? 
tell you what is written in the very table of stone that stands beside us? You at least know the magic which the Emperor put into Narnia at the very beginning. You know that every traitor belongs to me, as my lawful prey. So that human creature is mine. His life is forfeit to me. His blood is my property. Come and take it then. Fool, do you think your master could rob me of my rights by mere force? He knows the deep magic better than that. Unless if I get blood, as the law says, all Narnia will be overturned and perish in fire and water. It is true. I do not deny it. Oh, Aslan, can't you do something about the, about the deep magic? Isn't there something you can work against it? I cannot work against the Emperor's magic. Fall back, all of you. I will talk to the witch alone. You mean the queen. Shut up, Toad. Oh, Edmund, I'm scared. Why did we ever leave that wardrobe? I wish we could go back. Me too, but I'm not sure we could find the way. At any rate, we are needed here now more than ever. The matter is settled. The witch has renounced her claim on your brother's blood. But how do I know your promise will be kept? Because I gave you my word. Go. There is business to complete. We must move from this place at once, for it will be wanted for other purposes. We will camp tonight at the Fords of Baruna. What do you think he has arranged with the witch? I don't know, but it seems dangerous. Aslan, will you be coming with us? No, I am needed here. The witch has business to complete. When she is finished, you and the others must be prepared for anything. Perhaps even a battle of life or death. But you will be there yourself, Aslan. I can give you no promise of that. Well, what if she attacks tonight, down at the Fords of Baruna? No, she will not attack us tonight. All the same, that's how a soldier should think. Come, let's make haste. Can't sleep either? No, I have this feeling that something's hanging over us. Me too. It's about Aslan. Something terrible is going to happen to him, or he's going to do something terrible. He's been strange ever since he's talked to the witch. What do you say about not being with us at battle? Do you think he'll steal away and leave us tonight? I don't know. I've looked for him all over camp and couldn't find him. Look! Daughters of Eve, why are you here? We couldn't sleep. Please, may we come with you wherever you're going? I suppose I'd be happy to have some company for a while. But when I tell you, you must promise to leave. We will. Hassan, what's wrong? Are you ill? No, just sad and lonely. Now children, here you must leave me. And whatever happens, do not let yourselves be seen. Farewell. Bind him fast. Look, why is only a big cat after all? Is that all we're afraid of? Now, cover the table to hide his shame and proclaim our victory. Now, who has won, you fool? Did you think that by sacrificing yourself you could save the human traitor? Not only will I kill you in his place to appease the deep magic, but when you are dead, know that I will kill the boy as well. You have given me Narnia forever. You have lost your life and you have not saved his. Now, in that knowledge, despair and die. Now, follow me to set about the remains of the war. It will not take long to crush the human vermin and traitors. Now that the great fool, the great cat, lies dead. seems to matter now. I'm so cold, but I don't want to leave him. Let's walk around a bit. I'll warm you up. Look, 
Look over there, it's Care Paravel. It's beautiful. What's that? I'm too scared to look. <laughs> Who could have taken him? What does this mean? Is it more magic? Yes, it is more magic. Aslan! Then you are not dead? I am not dead, not now. But what does this mean? It means there is even deeper magic than the witch knew. Before time began, there was another law written. It states that when a willing victim who has committed no treachery... Like you? Like me, is killed in the place of a traitor... Like Edmund? Like Edmund, the table will crack and death itself will start working backward. Like, like now! Like now. And now to business. We must journey to the witch's castle. We have a long journey ahead of us. But the, must, but the fords of Baruna are just over there. We should go quickly. They're outnumbered. We must first journey to the witch's castle and free the creatures she has turned to stone. They will join us in the battle. Will Mr. Tumnus be there? Was he an enemy of the witch? Yes, because of me. Then I am certain we will find him. Let's make haste. You're the one with the gift, Lucy. Have you forgotten? The potion from Father Christmas. Ed, are you all right? I'm all right, just dazed. Peter, you fought well. You all fought well. Edmund's a real hero. If he hadn't destroyed the witch's wand, we all would have been stoned before you got here. Edmund, you've redeemed yourself. Always keep your heart in the right place, no matter how you are tempted. Yes, sir. Hello, daughter of Eve. Mr. Tumnus! I'm so glad you're safe. I was so worried. Are you quite yourself again? All in one piece, thanks to your persistence. And the powers of the king, of course. Sire, all is prepared in Care Paravel as you requested. Friends, the battle is won. The witch has been defeated. Spring has returned to Narnia. Let us go to Care Paravel for the crowning of our new kings and queens. ceremony at Caraparavel in celebrations that lasted many weeks. Aslan stayed for a while, but as was his way, disappeared, only returning when it suited him to give counsel where needed. He's wild, you know, not like a tame lion. The two kings and two queens governed Narnia faithfully, and long and happy was their reign. And they too grew in stature. Peter became a great warrior and was named Peter the Magnificent. Susan remained a wise and practical queen. She was called Susan the Gentle. Edmund was more grave and quiet than Peter and was great in counsel and judgment. He was called Edmund the Just. But as for Lucy, she was always joyous and full of life. Her people called her Lucy the Valiant. And one day, in the fullest of time, as they hunted the elusive white stag, it led them to a thicket marked by a lamppost which looked oddly familiar. They left their crowns and robes so they would not get ripped by the underbrush and Lucy followed the path back to the water from which they had come. 
Lucy lingered for a while, not sure if she would ever find her way back, but ultimately followed her heart and returned home for a while. Yes, the children will find their way back here again, perhaps not through the wardrobe, but there are other paths that lead to Narnia. For once a king in Narnia, always a king. For once a queen in Narnia, always a queen. They will return to their people, for good people need good rulers, and good rulers need good people. And that, perhaps, is the deepest magic of all. Let's hear it one more time for our wonderful cast and crew. I know. I just got to tell you, it's really been a tremendous joy to work with this group of people. They pulled it together. They pulled it off. They managed their academics. They went to their sports. They went to their lessons. They came to rehearsals. They really, really worked hard. They really did, and I'm incredibly proud of all of them. And I need to give a little special shout out, first of all, to Ava and Josie, our light and sound crew in the booth. And secondly, I just wanna take this one moment uh, because we're mostly parents in the room, to say that this could not happen without an incredibly talented and dedicated team of adults. So I would just like to say thank you to Nelly Agurcia, uh, Cara Grimaldi, Jen Segovia for being backstage with all these little guys during the run of the show. I would like to say thank you to Lori Palma, who created such beautiful, wonderful, totally age-appropriate costumes for them to help tell the story. And I would like to say thank you to Tim Folster, our amazing and remarkable sound man who makes these guys sound like pros. So let's give them a round of applause. And I have a little feeling that something is happening over here. So come here. What is happening? Hello. We want to thank Ms. to Miss Darton and the teachers that helped create the show. Thank you, Ms. Palma, for the wonderful costumes. We also want to thank Ms. Grimaldi and Ms. Segovia for both helping us backstage. <laughs> and also Ms. Sagorcia. Sorry. And of course, Ms. Darton for helping this show come to life. Let's have one more round of applause for our staff. All right, there's a wonderful reception out in the lobby. Thank you for coming and enjoy the reception. <laughs>